This is the new Renault Captur and this is, well, the only one really, new Skoda Kamiq. Two B crossovers which I shall compare for you today. However, as the weather is a bit dreary, I shall go back to the studio. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly and thank you for your sacrifice out there in the field. As you can see, I'm in my studio slash spare bedroom. This was planned, albeit for a different reason than the current self-quarantine situation. Just to be clear, I recorded both of these reviews in March, early March, before the pandemic stroke across Europe, and I wanted to introduce you to my spare bedroom studio because I've just launched a second channel called Marix Gear, and I'm linking to it everywhere. As the name suggests, my new channel will be about gear I use to film my shoestring budget car reviews. If you're into that sort of thing, pop in there, take a look and subscribe. If you want to see the Renault Captur Skoda Kamiq comparison right away, you can skip to the timecode displayed somewhere on the screen right now. But if you give me a couple more minutes, I'll quickly tell you what's going on with me and what you can expect on my main channel, Marek Drives, in the upcoming weeks. First of all, I hope everyone is feeling well, despite the situation we're all in. I wish you all good health, and even if we won't be traveling much in the months to come, I hope we'll at least be able to work and make a living. I suspect buying a new car is, at the moment, not your top priority, but maybe you'd like to take a break from all the bad news and spend some time with me listening to my whinging about cars. The new channel, Marek's Gear, was in the cards for some time now, and its launch is unrelated to the coronavirus pandemic, but since you're stuck at home, maybe you'll have some time to kill, and I encourage you to join me there. I want us all to learn something new about filming, about gear we use, etc. As I'm recording this, I still have five reviews to publish, all other tests have been cancelled or postponed at least until Easter, and then we'll see. Obviously, I do not expect people involved in press fleet management to risk their lives for car journals, although several companies offer disinfected press cars with minimum contact, which I greatly respect and I'm thankful for. I now have an officially sanctioned reason to be even less social than usual so I can stay home, which I recommend you do as well, or at least stay away from other people. And now, let's go back to the cars. The Renault Captur and Skoda Kamiq are very different in terms of design. Theoretically, they both have these trendy LED daytime running lights and in the Skoda, for the first time, they are above the normal headlights. But subjectively, the Renault design is much bolder. Both cars are based on super minis, and indeed, the Kamiq looks like a lifted Scala, but the Captur, in my opinion, clearly differs from the Clio. The Captur's boot has 422 liters volume, including the spare tire well. It gets a double floor, which in the Kamek is a part of a Simply Clever pack. The Skoda's boot volume is 400 liters. With the Simply Clever pack you get more cargo nets, but these big shopping bag hooks are standard. In the Renault, shopping bag hooks are there because somebody said they have to be. In the Skoda, you get an electrically operated tailgate with something called tip to close, which I found would only sometimes work. In the Captur, you have to open and close the tailgate by hand. One may wonder if in such a small car, power tailgate is a must. I'm of the opinion, having a choice is better than not having any. Some people are just vertically challenged, others may have arm injuries, and sometimes it's just raining cats and dogs and you want the boot open before you run to it with shopping. The Skoda press car was configured to make the interior look bigger. There is a panoramic roof and very light upholstery. By the way, whoever tested this car before me, I'd appreciate if you took the time and effort to train your kids not to draw with a pen 
on car upholstery, especially if it's not yours. The car, because the kid is obviously yours and don't get me started. Anyway, even with darker upholstery and without the glass roof, Skoda interior looks more roomy because there is more light coming in through side windows. Also, those behind the passengers. In the Captur, the C-pillar limits visibility and light getting in. On the plus side, the Captur gets a sliding bench, both cars have USB ports in the back and air vents. The Kamek also gets an armrest. The rear seat in both cars is rather narrow. Kamek gets larger door pockets than the Captur. Like on the outside, also the cockpit in the Captur looks more interesting than the one in the Kamek. I think Renault's new infotainment system is good and intuitive to use, as long as it works, because one of my colleagues experienced some issues where the EasyLink system would crash or freeze. Renault kept the AC and basic car functions controlled by physical buttons and knobs, the rest is on the large touch display. In the Skoda it's kind of familiar, kind of not, the screen is smaller and the touch buttons around it remind me of the time when Volkswagen Group made the most intuitive infotainment systems out there, where you would get a coherent mix of physical buttons and touch display, those days are gone. Both cars have heated steering wheel and heated seats, Skoda also offers lumbar support adjustment in both front seats and I have more headroom in the Skoda. Both cars have controllers behind the steering wheel. In the Skoda, the controller is for the cruise control and in the Renault, it is for the multimedia. The difference is that in the Skoda, I can see the controller and in the Renault, I have to rely on muscle memory. In both cars, you can have analog or virtual instrument cluster. In the Skoda, there is more of a choice, while in the Renault, you quickly arrive at a point beyond which you need to specify the virtual instrument cluster. It's not a problem for me, but I noticed the virtual cockpit is not something people commenting on the internet seem to like. Why? Drop me a comment. Cup holders and storage are ok in both cars, however the element which makes the Renault's interior special is also its weak point. I'm talking about the optional floating console with the shift by wire gear lever. The selector doesn't have a release button, so you have to hold it longer in order to engage the gear you want. It's particularly annoying when you are trying to make a quick three-point turn. Skoda drives fine, soundproofing is good, at least in the front of the car. The active lane assist system is, in my opinion, too aggressive, but at least it works. In the Renault, some of the driver aids seem to have a mind of their own. They work when they want and I was unable to figure them out. The suspension in the Kamek is good on small bumps, but as the roads get rougher, the rear suspension is jittery. Visibility is good and the car is easy to maneuver. There is also a backup camera. In my test, the Skoda with a 3-cylinder 1-liter 115 horsepower petrol engine and DSG gearbox used about 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is on par with the manufacturer's data. Visibility in the Captur, especially after switching from the Kamek, is bad. Of course, after some time I got used to it, but as far as the first impressions are concerned, Skoda wins. The Captur needs some time to get used to, but after a while it turns out the steering is precise, the suspension is very good at keeping the car stuck to the road, but the soundproofing is subpar. The test car provided by Renault was powered by a 130 horsepower four-cylinder engine, which felt much more eager than the one in the Kamek. I suspect the Volkswagen Group is now very careful to keep the emissions in check, so they electronically limit the engine's performance in certain situations. And it works, because the Captur uses slightly more fuel than the Kamek. On the other hand, the Renault engine has bigger displacement, so the difference in fuel economy is negligible. So the Captur wins. The Captur also wins with a 360 camera on a large screen. It's not Volvo level, but in this segment, it's more than good.
prices of both of these cars start at around 18,000 euro. The Kamek was specced modestly compared to the Captur, but at 32,000 euro it was a grand more expensive. The Kamek can be had fully loaded with a more powerful engine for not much more money, but the car specced for the press fleet was just too expensive for what it offered. In higher trim levels, the Kamek looks bland compared to the Capture, and out of these two test cars, I would definitely take the Renault home. However, in lower spec, which probably many prospective buyers are considering, the Capture feels cheap. And which one of these two cars suits you more? And why? Let me know in the comment section below. Visit my second channel, Marek's Gear. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And don't go out and wash your hands and don't go out again.